If you've ever been to a Smart and Final before, then you know they have some weird, 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 weird stuff. But that makes for an epic grocery haul because we encounter all kinds of strange things that are kind of exotic in interesting ways that might work really well for a low carb lifestyle. So let's head on into Smart and Final. Hopefully we don't get asked to leave this time and we can pick around and see what kind of good keto finds there are right now. Cause I'm pretty sure we'll find some interesting and intriguing stuff that's gonna have a little bit of a scientific explanation. Let's roll. Smart and Final is kind of like that store that you go to when nothing else is open, it's kind of random. I don't think I really know anyone that does their weekly shopping there. Unless you maybe own a small restaurant, you're getting random supplies, but thing is, you got to check this place out because you will find some really interesting things that make your keto lifestyle a little bit easier because you don't have to go all the way to some, you know, exotic ethnic store to get certain things like Labna, which I'll point out here. Anyhow, just wait and see. Okay, one of the things you have to be careful of is I just stumbled across a lot of their nuts here in the sort of bulk nut section. And I want to point out something you need to be careful of with macadamia nuts. We have regular First Street brand. But then when we look at the ingredients, we see we have macadamia nuts and then non-GMO canola, canola, and or soy oil. So they're not air roasted or air uh, dried or anything like that. They're roasted in oil and they're roasted in a low quality oil. Macadamia nuts are one of the highest quality nuts, fats that you can consume. And that just completely changes the fatty acid profile by having that in there. Now I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna look around to see if maybe some of the other nuts are different. Let's see. Uh, I have to look for anything that's roasted. So they're roasted, no salt almonds. Let's see, just like that. Ah, man, no pugs. We've got it. Canola and or soy oil. All right, I'm sure we can find other nuts. It's just important that you note that just because they're a little bit cheaper at the bulk section doesn't mean that you're really getting true value. Now, Smart and Final throws these little sections in called good and well. We're gonna skip the produce section. They do generally have good produce, but this would end up being a three hour video and you're busy and I know that. So. Let's take a look at what they have in this good and well refrigerated section because there's some fun things that I would recommend. So you look for this label when you're at a smart and final. Whenever you see that good and well, there's usually some interesting stuff. Now, here's something cool. They don't have the keto version, but these Koya proteins, they have them at Whole Foods in the keto version and they're really, really good and clean and delicious. The keto one is probably my favorite keto flavored uh, ready to drink shake. Not even gonna show you the nutrition facts here because this one is not keto, so it does not matter. Although it is still pretty low carb, quite frankly. So we end up having 13 grams of carbs, seven of which is fiber. So really only have six grams of carbs. So you could consume this. We have almond milk, we have brown rice protein, pea protein, chickpea protein, a little sugar root fiber. This one's got cane sugar because it's not the keto one, but still pretty awesome. Okay, now when I'm fasting or if I'm doing keto and I want to consume something that tastes good, that does not have a bunch of calories and is not a diet soda, I like to drink these things, okay? These Bragg's apple cider vinegar drinks. Let me show you what's in them, 79 cents. And we have distilled water, apple cider vinegar, lime, water, and stevia. I would consider this fasting friendly, which is just an extra, extra bonus if you're doing keto plus intermittent fasting. So I'm gonna get a couple of those because those are just delicious. My cart's gonna be really random. And then they have this other flavor here, which I personally like too, the ginger spice, which has distilled water, apple cider vinegar, ginger, and stevia leaf. That one I would say has probably a couple more calories because it's ground ginger or whatever that's in it, but still not a bad find. See less than two minutes in this grocery store and we're already finding things. And if you don't have a smart and final, it's no big deal. You can still pick some stuff up and learn some good keto finds that you might have at your local grocery store. Um, I also saw, we've got a couple different cold brews here. We've got Stumpton and we've got Rise. Rise is a very well-known cold brew brand, uh, organic. So the price is not amazing. Look at this, $2.49, but it is clean. We have water and organic coffee. So not a bad little find for cold brew, but I would recommend buying it in bulk or something where you can get a little cheaper than that. One more beverage that I'm gonna show you, and then we will go ahead and get out of beverage land and get into the more fun food finds. Uh, I'm a big fan of what is called water kefir. Okay, so I like kombucha, but generally kombucha has too many carbs for keto. But Kavita is nice and low. This basically it's called water uh, water kefir. What it is, is it's where they take water and they add certain fermentable bacteria to it and they allow it to ferment. Whereas kombucha, they're using sugar and adding it to tea to get it to ferment. So slightly different mechanism. I have videos on it, but look at these three grams of carbs total, a little bit of sugar in there just to make it um, ferment, sparkling water, water kefir culture, which is water, lactic acid, kefir culture, which probably has sugar. There is some natural flavors in there, 
apple cider vinegar, lemon extract, cayenne extract. Uh, then it's got the bacillus, uh, coagulins, GBI 30, which is a really good probiotic. Anyhow, and stevia, no erythritol, nothing weird. Super clean. And what's the price like? $2.99. See, it's $3.59 at Whole Foods. I know this because I buy them all the time and they're a little spendy. I'm going to get one. Okay, I just stumbled across some um, prepackaged veggies, seasoned Brussels sprouts. Just want to show you real quick what can happen if you're not careful. Beautiful Brussels sprouts with a canola oil blend of canola oil, extra virgin olive oil, minced garlic. Okay, that's not too bad because it has canola oil and olive oil. A lot of times you'll see canola and soy. So just be careful when you see things like this because a lot of times they add extra oils to it. Anyhow, let's move on. You don't need to be spending a bunch of time here. If you want the best excuse to not have to go somewhere when you're on a keto diet, go on a keto diet and then eat a bunch of gummy worms. Trust me, you'll be seat belted in the bathroom and you have a perfectly viable excuse to not have to go to that function that you weren't wanting to go to. A lot of times uh, they have little things that sneak out, but I don't think they have any keto breads. Let's see. doesn't look like we have any keto breads, but that's fine. I was not expecting to see that. Okay. Oh, here's where some cool stuff here. Here's like the first really cool, cool find. And I found this a couple years ago and I don't see it at many other grocery stores. Otherwise I have to go to like Mediterranean grocery stores to find it. It's this stuff called labneh. Uh, labneh is, is a kefir cheese. So it's like a cultured milk. So it's kind of like a yogurt, but it has more of a probiotic effect to it. And if we look at original labneh, yes, it's not organic, but let's see. We have six grams of fat. We have two grams of carbs in a two tablespoon serving. So it's almost like a cross between sour cream and yogurt. This is, what about protein content? Okay, protein, it's low protein, but it's a higher fat. So it's not something that you'd wanna use necessarily as a protein, but something you may want to be using as a fat source. Now you see we have all these yogurts, we have things like that. And here's a different brand of Labneh kefir cheese. Let's see what's up here. Now it's still about the same macronutrients. Point is, is it's one of the most probiotic rich foods that you could find. Does it list the actual kind of probiotic? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, so we've got uh, Thermophilus, we've got Bulgaricus, uh, Cassie, Acidophilus, and Bifidobacterium. Basically, we've got a nice, well-rounded amount of probiotics there. If you had to choose between getting yogurt or getting sour cream or getting labneh, as far as probiotics are concerned, labneh is going to be the way to go. So when you're first starting a ketogenic diet, your gut biome is getting adjusted. I would highly recommend that. Okay, it does help you out. It seems to help me out a lot, and you don't need much of it. We always joke whenever we see that guy, he looks like my old neighbor. The guy was just not a nice guy. And he looked like, and this guy doesn't look super, super nice either. I mean, he, I mean, he probably is nice, but he just doesn't want you to take his barrel. All right, you remember how I mentioned we were gonna find really cool things? Well, we did find some cool things right here also in, what do you know? It's under the good and well section. Always finding good things under the good and well section. I'm telling you. You may recall from other videos that I tell you that goat's milk and goat's cheese is the way to go because it's a different kind of protein. Essentially, it's less inflammatory. Essentially, it has less of an effect on your gut. Sorry, there's a lot of noise going on behind me. Hopefully, you can hear me. Less effect on the gut as far as lipopolysaccharides getting into the bloodstream. So therefore, it's just a generally healthier cheese. Well, take a look at this. Yeah, you're telling me, right? Super healthy. Okay, quite frankly, I know there's some people on my channel that can probably decipher that, but the good news is we have it here. I'm about to get in trouble, I can tell these guys. I've been kicked out of this store before and they are aggressive about it. Okay, so we've got French sheep milk. It's important that it's French. Uh, not really. And we've got salt, cheese cultures. Yeah, that's it, sheep milk. So good quality, what is called A2 casein. And then we have Bulgarian sheep milk cheese. This is gonna be, the only difference here is you're going with a Bulgarian sheep instead of a French sheep. But either way, just an interesting, cool find. Now let's move along. We've got all this vegan stuff, which generally I stay away from. Here's why. Look, it's not to say that you can't have that can't have these plant-based items. Most of the time they have a bunch of soy oil and a bunch of canola oil. And I know you're trying to lessen your carbon footprint on your body, but just trust me, this stuff is worse. Okay, the plant oils are not going to be good for you. They're generally hydrogenated. Anyway, let's just move on. There's a lot of stuff underneath it. We've got nut pods, which I generally think is a great product. We have a French vanilla unsweetened one. What do we have here? We have water, coconut cream, straight up. Almonds, some natural flavors, which I'm not a big fan of. Acacia gum. This would absolutely break a fast, but it's totally keto friendly. What about the original? Unsweetened, yep, zero grams of carbs. Water, coconut cream, so you get some good MSCTs in there. The acacia gum is just kind of a fiber and a thickener. Dipotassium phosphate is not that bad of a preservative. I'm not a huge fan of the sunflower lecithin, but it's pretty low down in the ingredient list. And quite frankly, $3.99 for that is a great price. 
Now let me show you something about the milkadamia. Milkadamia is using raw macadamias. I have a love-hate relationship with milkadamia brand. Okay, they have some good products, but they also have some that just throw you a complete curveball with random stuff that's in it. For example, look at their creamer, macadamia nut milk, some cane sugar, which is a little weird, sunflower oil, which I give them thumbs up, at least it's better than canola or soy, coconut cream, calcium carbonate, natural flavors. Then we get into some random stuff and fillers. Okay, if we get into like their, what is this, unsweetened? Oh, this is a fudge creamer. Ooh, that sounds good. What's in that? Same macadamia, a little bit of sugar, sunflower, cocoa powder. Basically the same thing with some cocoa powder. Listen, that's not bad. That's okay. That's acceptable. Okay, I wouldn't consider it Mediterranean or super clean, but at least the primary ingredient is macadamia nut milk, which really isn't using the fats though. It's just the water that kind of runs off the milk. You know, it's like basically if you were to take a cup of macadamia nuts and like squeeze them a little bit and run them under the faucet, you've got macadamia nut milk. It doesn't mean that it's got all the fats, all the palmitoleic acid and all the stuff that we want in the great omega profile, okay? And they really say no palm oil, okay? They do that because they know that a lot of the uh, vegan community would really like that because palm oil uh, is largely considered not to be sustainable and it raises this big um, ethical flag. So I get that. But then what do we have here? Whoa, macadamia oil blend. What the heck? First ingredient is coconut oil, then it's canola oil, then it's macadamia nut oil. So it's the third of their blend, and they have canola oil in there, then 2% or less of sunflower less than salt, vinegar powder, natural flavors, and yeast extract, which is pretty much <laughs> MSG. This is gonna be one of those things where in a few years we look at this like we look at margarine. Okay, margarine is not healthy. We were led to believe that it was healthy because it was lower fat, lower saturated fat, but it's riddled with trans fats. There may not be trans fats in that, but it's deceptive, it's deceiving, and it plays up on the amazing healthy name of the macadamia nut and throws it under the bus. My opinion, but then again, I don't mind them as a brand. They have some clean stuff. All right, now I'm moving over to the regular yogurt section, Greek yogurt, and I'm gonna touch on this quick because I'm getting some dirty, dirty looks and I need to skedaddle before I get kicked out. This Too Good brand, this is a killer price. Target, it's $1.99. Well, sometimes, sometimes it's $1.50. But this, two grams of sugar brand. Okay, what do we have in here? We have typical Greek yogurt stuff, tapioca starts to thicken it, natural flavors, all kind of junk. But they're using stevia, no erythritol, nothing else. And there's only three grams of carbs in it. So if you want a fruit on the bottom style yogurt, that's a great one to get. Can you hear this jam? It's like they know me. Anyway, glad there's practically no one here except for the employees that want me out of here. Um, Okay, I have done videos in the nut butter section of Smart and Final, right in this very spot, and I remember how loud this noise is. Hopefully my editors aren't having a terrible time. Johnny, JR, Cam, I'm sorry guys. Anyhow, let's see what they've got. Is peanut butter keto? Okay, peanut butter is a legume. Peanuts are a legume. So peanut butter, it's not even really a nut butter, but you run into some problems, okay? Peanut butter is going to be very, very, very skewed in the omega-3 profile. Most of them have sugar added to it, so most of them don't even fit the keto profile very well. But we do have some slightly better options here. For example, their almond butter, it's a little pricey, it's $6.99. It is higher in omega-6s than a lot of nut butters that I would really recommend, but check out the ingredients here. This is Sun Harvest brand, and we have dry roasted almonds as the only ingredient, dry roasted. Okay, not roasted anything else, dry roasted. Now, that price is not too great. So what about sunflower seed butter? I get asked this one a lot. Uh, sunflowers, or sunflower seeds I should say, are still very high omega-6, uh, but still not bad. It's just we have sugar in there. So I, don't, I wouldn't have this particular one. If you had to choose between sunflower seed butter or peanut butter, I would go with sunflower seed butter. Fun fact on peanut butter, if you get Australian peanut butter or uh, just peanut butter that's made with peanuts from Australia, they have different standards and they raise them slightly different. So you end up getting a better fatty acid profile. So I would go for that if that was the case. I wanna talk about a super cool find. This is one of my favorite things that I can get here. And people have asked me in videos where I get such a thing. And it's here at Smart and Final or online. Okay, this is green tea that is decaf. Okay, so that means we're getting a lot of the catechins, we're getting a lot of the benefits, okay, and all the flavonoids, and we're getting the uh, phytonutrients and all that without the caffeine. So halfway through the day, if you want to cut out caffeine and switch to this, it is not organic, but still kind of cool. You do need to know that when it comes down to tea, if it's not organic, the first time it's getting washed is when you're putting it in your cup with some water. So just be careful with that and be aware. Not even joking, guys, I'm going down this aisle and the guy comes up behind me and says, hey, can I help you find anything? Like, they're already really, really weirded out by the fact that I'm in here. And this is just 
a quick flashback of what happened last time. I don't know what they're so strange about with me filming in here, especially when I'm doing cell phone style. I get it, like, but I try to keep it extra private. I try not to say anything bad about, anyway, it's just weird. But this store is like the only one that I have a big issue with. Okay, we're on the cereal and baking aisle now. See if there's anything interesting here. Probably not gonna find much in the cereal section that's gonna be keto friendly, but might find some better oils. Let's see. Okay, they have the simple coconut oil cooking spray. It's pretty good stuff. Ingredients, coconut oil and soy lecithin. I would probably prefer it doesn't have the lecithin in it, but I get it so it doesn't stick but Trader Joe's might have a better option there. Real quick on the olive oils. Uh, we can go to town on lots of different olive oil discussion, but generally go for olive oils that are gonna be in dark bottles. Okay, if it's in a light bottle like this, it's already gonna be oxidized. Um, there's a lot of different things that we could talk about here. Usually you wanna go with ones that are gonna be from California, Australia, it's generally, a, or Italy, it's usually a little bit cleaner and they usually have some different processing, but here's a cold pressed one. So I would recommend this one. That's a great price, $6.99 for California Olive Ranch, uh, at least on a surface level. Um, you know, looking around like $3.99, you can go for the cheaper one, but it's such a light bottle, I'd be really weary of that. Remember, on a keto diet, those olive oils, those avocado oils, those omegas, uh, excuse me, those monounsaturated fats, not omegas, those monounsaturated fats are very, very good at helping our body generate ketones, much more so than saturated fats, much more so than a lot of the other fats, simply because of the process they go through in the body. Now, what I mean by that is if you're trying to activate different enzymes, trying to activate your body to generate more ketones on its own, olive oil is great. So try making uh, your keto coffee, your bulletproof coffee, stuff like that with olive oil instead of coconut oil, just for something different, just to twist it up. Now, here's a cool item I just found in the baking section in the sweetener section. I haven't seen this one before. So something kind of fun. Stevia and monk fruit with turmeric. What do we have here? We have erythritol. Okay. <laughs> turmeric, stevia leaf extract, black pepper. This is cool. Okay. They even know to put the black pepper in there for the bioperine effect. What the bio, let me explain something. So what happens is we need the black pepper to sort of disarm the liver so that the metabolites from the turmeric, like uh, all the things that are, uh, allow us to have the anti-inflammatory effect are broken down. So it makes a really strong effect if you have the black pepper in there, I usually recommend using fulvic acid or something like that instead because I don't like using too much in the way of black pepper or bioperine because it can disarm the liver with other things, medications, everything like that, making you more susceptible to toxic side effects. However, we're talking a negligible amount and I just like the fact that they thought about that. It's pretty cool. So here we have our good and well section again, but I don't see anything. Oh, actually they do have Lakanto. That's cool and they have some almond flour. So that's a nice little, nice little surprise. Okay, $12.99 for that price of, for that size of Lakanta is not that good of a price. Almond flour definitely would go Trader Joe's or something instead of that. But then they do have the lilies, but I don't like to throw them under the bus, but I gotta kind of throw them under the bus because we've got unsweetened cocoa, inulin, erythritol. Um, it's not it's not terrible, but inulin and erythritol combination always just makes me feel super bloated. And then if we get into well, they don't have them. Okay, they just have the dark chocolate, the baking chocolate, the semi-sweet and the different kind of semi-sweet, semi-sweet style, I don't know. Anyway, so it's cool that they have them, but not my favorite. Okay, now we're on the chip and snack aisle, which you hear me talking all the time about pork rinds. The nice thing is a lot of times these inexpensive pork rinds are usually the ones that have the least additives. It doesn't mean that they are the uh, best. Okay, let me explain something really quick with pork rinds. What's the biggest ingredient in pork rinds? It's pork, right? So if the pork is low quality, that's gonna be a bigger lever that is pulled in a negative way than adding a little bit of MSG or anything like that. I would rather go for a high quality pork with a little bit of nefarious like seasonings than I would go for a very low quality pork with not a lot of seasonings. The good thing is, is that very seldom do you find good quality pork. Epic and 4505 are the only brands that I know of that use good quality pork. So otherwise you're pretty much left with lower quality pork. Does that mean don't eat pork rinds? No, it's really okay. Um, pork is mostly monounsaturated fat, which means that the saturated fat isn't as present in the things like the pork rinds. So if you look at the uh, ingredients here, or rather the nutritional facts, five grams of total fat, two grams of saturated fat, and actually a good amount of monounsaturated fat, more monounsaturated fat than saturated fat. Saturated fat doesn't get oxidized, but saturated fat will hold more of the toxins. So these inexpensive $2.69 uh, chicharrones are going to be fine. What I wouldn't recommend having is the ones that have the flavoring added to them. See, monosodium glutamate right there. So regular Mission brand or Guerrero brand, gonna to be totally fine. Okay, we're almost to the nut section here. So let's see what they've got. 
Not the greatest selection. But we do have Royal Hawaiian. That's not a bad price. Nah, four ounces though. It's not a bad price. So still. Let's see, 10 ounces for $15.99, $1.60 per ounce. Okay, so the dry roasted Mauna Loa is $1.60 per ounce versus $2 per ounce. That's a significant difference. So what's our ingredient panel here? Dry roasted macadamia nuts, sea salt. That's nice and clean. I would approve this one. Mauna Loa is a nice little brand too. If you're into edamame, yes, it is still soy, but at least it doesn't have as much of the soy oil. Uh, these little Seapoint farms, pretty decent macro profile. It's just soybeans and sea salt, so they're not extracting the oil. Now remember, it's still gonna be lower quality because the oil in soy is not great, but nine grams of carbs, six of which is fiber. Likely to not get kicked out of keto with that. And it's a really inexpensive price if you just want something to fill you up. Again, you know how I feel about soy, so just be very, very careful there. Okay, when it comes to meats and ground turkeys and stuff like this, I touch on this a lot. And I spent a lot of time talking about it at a Costco video. You should go for ground chicken versus ground turkey just because of what they pump the turkey full of. So try to aim for the ground chicken if you can, which I don't see that they have here for organic ground beef and it's grass fed without antibiotics or added hormones. That is awesome. I'm getting that. Okay, I have to walk down an aisle to talk about this one for a second. Guys, I'm, I'm the timer's going. I'm going to get kicked out. They're following me. Anyhow, point is organic and grass fed. That's a very good sign. That means that it's doesn't say that it's grass finished, but it's a start, okay? It probably is fed grass pellets. It's not necessarily uh, raised on nice, clean grass. I can see where it's coming from, and I can tell you. Yeah, or it doesn't say it's imported from New Zealand. What you want to look for is New Zealand and Australian beef is usually truly grass fed, grass finished, and raised on, uh, on pasture, whereas a lot of the American stuff is not. So this probably has a good amount of just soy that was fed to the cows, or the cows were fed grass pellets and we went to harvest they were given corn to fatten them up, but still at least it's organic and grass fed. And for $5.99, it's not a bad price. I put a link down below. I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a grass fed, grass finished meat delivery company, but they have hot dogs, they have chicken, they have turkey, they have uh, just about everything you can imagine. Ribeyes, New York steaks. So they're generally who I use. I really don't buy meat at the grocery store too much uh, these days, simply because I can get it delivered right to my doorstep and it ends up being a lot less expensive for me at least when I factor in my time and I also factor in driving to the store and gas and everything like that. So anyhow, highly, highly recommend you check them out. There's a special link down below if you wanna give them a shot and get some meat delivered right to your doorstep. Super, super cool stuff, amazing company. Fun fact, if you're gonna get a steak, I usually recommend going for either a New York, or if you can do it and swing it, a filet. Simply because the fatty, the, excuse me, the fat ribboning is going to be easier to remove so you can control the fats that are coming in. Envision this, you have, oh, look at that guy. Hey, hey buddy. He's like my friend. He's like my, my conscience on my shoulder. You should leave smart and final because they're going to kick you out. I'm telling you, no, you should stay. You should stay because you need to film this content and you need to be a rebel. Anyway, um, what was I saying? If you took two ribeyes, okay, both were six ounces, and you put them right next to each other, there's a good chance that one ribeye is gonna have 30 grams of fat and the other ribeye is gonna have 15. Okay, it all depends on the cow, it depends on the fat. Oh, that scared me, he scared me again. Let me give him a name. How about, how about Ted? Ted scared me. So if you have them next to each other, you'll notice, okay, well, every steak is different. It's harder to control the fat and a piece of meat that has more fat in it naturally is going to be harder and harder to control. So if you go with like a uh, filet or something that's leaner, it's less margin for error. I know it's more expensive, but it's easier to control. Otherwise, you're left wondering what the heck it's gonna be. When it comes to bacon, turkey bacon versus regular bacon, go for regular bacon. Try to go for bacon that's going to have a thicker ribbon of saturated fat and less marbling. For example, let's see, like that one's got a lot of marbling. That one's got a lot of marbling. You wanna go for ones that have more of a ribbon. Uh, this one looks a little better, it's leaner. Just go for the leanest ones possible. I just found something super cool in the cheese section. This is what I'm talking about. I, didn't, I don't see this at regular stores. Look at this. I've seen this at Costco in a larger brand of, or version of this, but look at goat's milk. Remember what I talked about goat's milk earlier? Mancheco, sheep's milk, and then Iberico, which is sheep, goat, and a little bit of cow. Really good quality. $7.99, so it's not the cheapest, but if you're looking for a little bit of a guilty pleasure, that's what we want, something like that. This is delicious, delicious cheese. And then we have some Greek feta, which is made with sheep and goat. 
and directly from Greece. So this is where Smart and Final seems to shine. They really do have a nice cheese selection and it's fairly affordable considering what these cheeses usually go for. General rule of thumb is you wanna go for harder cheeses, aged cheeses, the longer that they're aged, the better. Okay, so usually something like aged Gouda, which is gonna have a nice vitamin K profile, things like aged Parmesan, things like um, Gruyere that's aged, thing, things like that you wanna get for anything that's aged. Mozzarella, stuff like that is not usually the kind that you wanna go for. Oh my God, okay, I gotta go. They are seriously driving me crazy. They're following me around. They've got cameras everywhere here. I'm gonna touch on deli meat and then we'll get into some other stuff and get out of here. Um, okay, not a whole lot of these cured meats. Cured meats get a bad rap. Just because they're cured meats doesn't mean that they are full of nitrites and nitrates. And that's even still kind of a myth. If we look at uh, prosciutto, for example, this is dry cured uh, ham. We have best if open 10 minutes before serving. Where's our ingredients here? I don't even see ingredients. Oh, pork and sea salt. So there's no nitrate. So prosciutto is usually that way. That's what I like about prosciutto and aged ham compared to say, let's look at like salami. Oh, right, that one does not look too good. Genoa salami. Okay, then we have pork, salt, dextrose, natural flavorings. Let's look at some of these like chorizo ones, chorizo, whatever, potato, potato, pork, salt. Yeah, okay, that's not a good price. But this is a good price for some prosciutto right here. Aged 200 days, ham and sea salt. It's a lot of salt, but still really darn clean. So if you're gonna go for something you wanna put on the charcuterie or something like that, you'd wanna go just like this. Some goat cheeses, some prosciutto, maybe some aged ham, you're in business. I'm gonna take one more quick trip down like the frozen section, just to see if there's anything that's jumping out at me there. Uh, and then we'll get out of here because <laughs> they want me to eat big time. Across really quick, that's a good price for Zevia. There's nothing, uh, by the way, people ask all the time, Zevia is good to go for fasting. Don't always recommend it, but for a 10 pack like this, that's a good price. Pretty much just carbonated water, some natural flavors, and some uh, stevia. They don't put any erythritol or anything like that. Erythritol plus carbonation is not a good mix. Okay, now I'm just grabbing things for a video. It's kind of like just doing a video on my channel, but I'm not, I'm grabbing different, like, you know No, it's not gonna be, it's not even live or anything. Okay, yeah, no worries. Okay, good. Surprisingly pretty cool. So Brett just asked me what I was doing and uh, didn't tell me I couldn't film. They just asked me what I was doing and making sure it wasn't live, which is kind of weird. But I am gonna get out of here because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. I think we've got a few good keto finds. And if you want to see more of these, let me know down below in the comment section. And we'll recap in a second. That was a little bit of an odd experience and not what I was expecting. But I think we still covered some good ground. You learned about the labne, you learned about the different kinds of cheeses. You learned about some of the drinks, which I think was a great thing. And you probably got a little bit of meat education. If you want me to do follow-up videos at any particular store, I lean on you to comment down below what store you want to see. And if you haven't checked out the Dollar Tree haul that I did for keto on a budget for like 20 or $30 a month, you've got to check that sucker out. It'll probably pop up below in the suggested feed, but just in case, I'll put a link in the description too. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.